Hello, Flakit. Thank you for joining hello, hello. me. My pleasure. How are you? <laughs> um, you know, chilling. How's the office season treating you? Terrible. Terrible? Is, yeah, so much time. Why not use that time to grind uh, maybe another game? Okay, yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> Off cameras, we were talking a bit. I'm, I tried World of Warcraft. I'm probably next Wunder. Um, it bangs. Like, I fully understand Wunder now. Like, one day he told yep. me, you know, in G2, some stories about, like, oh, we need to cancel screams. Uh, someone has to, you know. There's if there's a raid, there's a raid, man. Yeah. You can't do nothing about Na it. You now, can't let 25 yeah. people wait. At the beginning, I was like, what? That's so unprofessional. But now, now I fully understand it now. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. 16 years later, I can tell you the same thing. <laughs> the game bags and bags. So today we're going to be launching the sessions, and this is our first session of the oh, sessions. Okay. So I'm I'm actually the first one. You are the first one. Okay. You feel honored? Oh, uh, pressured. Pressured. And honored at the same time. Okay. Okay. Well. I think I've interviewed you enough times to know that yeah. you are more than capable yeah. of the occasion, Flackhead. But what people should know is that many celebrities, gaming celebrities, will be coming over on a face-to-face -face live here on this set. So stay tuned on Twitter and YouTube at Esport Santander. Now, I've also been told that Yankos is coming. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little bit scared. Yeah, same. I don't think he's like the best guest to interview. I think this guy is like zero. I made know. the mistake once. Yeah. I asked for both of you. Yeah. It's like, first of all, this guy, you know, like um, zero, what's the word? He's uh, like not charismatic at all. At all. <laughs> uh, zero interesting. It's just like mega nerd. Uh, Nidali one trick. Terrible Nidali one trick. Um, How can you be a one trick if you don't hit the main ability of a one yeah, trick? That's why it's a yeah, terrible yeah, yeah. one trick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, hopefully, you know, for some reason it gets shut down with like Yankos and you get maybe another pro player from like Rocket League or something. But um, yeah, I mean, if you have to interview Yankos, it sucks for you, I guess. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get you together another yeah. time. I'd, yeah, rather, yeah. I'd rather keep yeah. you solo at this yeah, point, yeah. maybe Yankos at another time. Because our topic today is working under pressure. And we both know that in esports, there is in general a lot of pressure. And some of it is good yeah. and some of it is not that great. Yeah. So we're going to talk about both sides of the coin, if you will. Mm -hmm. Sure. I want to ask you, because it's very interesting every time I speak in general to pro players, people deal with, you know, stress yeah. and pressure differently. So how do you cope with the pressure when it comes to professional life, but also personal life? I mean, in professional life, um, you know, I think a lot of, you know, like how to handle uh, pressure and stuff comes with like, experience, I think. Because when I was a rookie... And I would like giga choke or like uh, you know like underperform like heavily and stuff. I would really like punish myself, and I wouldn't be like um, very open to not only my teammates but like every single every single one basically. So now you know with experience, I I I'm just like more open to my teammates. I I just talk with them, share my my problems, share my like uh, you know my, what's going on through my mind. Um, and as well, I talk a lot to my dad. And especially when it comes to personal stuff, I, I always talk to my dad. Oh, so you do uh, have a supportive family behind yeah. you. That's awesome to see. Now, Flakid, I love how you opened up about, you know, when when it's like one of your first times on the stage mm -hmm. and you are under pressure. Sometimes you choke, sometimes you feel sad. I want to ask you about this in particular because you had a good run uh, over in the ERL. And so then, of course, you get picked up by G2 and that puts a lot of pressure on you playing for a storied org yeah. uh, like G2. What do you do when you like first step on stage and you know that you're replacing Reckless, you know, all eyes, all eyes are on you? I mean, the first days are uh, usually the, you know, the toughest. Um, but in Jitu was like a bit different, I would say, because we had like uh, two months like tryouts slash scrims. Uh, so, you know, I got really used to the team. And uh, of course, like the, the, the buy was really nice. Like everyone was like, I mean, we're kind of like a like a small family, so you know if you get along with your teammates like pretty well, then you reduce like a lot of the pressure. But of course, when it comes to like the first games, I mean, our first games it was like COVID times, so we didn't have to go on like the actual stage. But was it was it better or worse? I mean, usually it's better because you don't face like a like you know public and stuff. Like if you, you know, if you like feel pressure or, or you're choking and stuff, if you're on stage, usually it's like harder to manage and it's easier to choke. 
But it's true that I was playing my first three games. It was super weak with uh, COVID. So it really didn't matter. Oh, you were ill? Yeah. Oh. I, I was ill, I think. I'm not sure if it was Targa. Someone else was like mega sick as well. But uh, I mean, I was dying. I was oh. like, did you dying? So I was like, uh, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> but still we managed to do like 2-1, I think. So, so then by the time I went to stage, you know, it was like playoff time already. So I had already, you know, built uh, some trust on myself, so some trust on my team. So it was like way easier to play. So what is it that you generally do? You go onto stage, mm. you're the AD carrier, of course, like, okay, no matter in which matter, sometimes you get left alone in the bot yeah. lane, like no one cares about you, but like, especially right now where it's all bot diff pretty mm. much, like every jungler I've asked at EU, at EU Masters, I'm like, hey, do you feel like you could take another path? Like you have a jack stop lane, you play in Setsuani, he's like, nope, if you want to find me, I'll be over on the bot side of the map. So I mean, I mean, if you ask, if you ask junglers, they're usually very delusional, like the <laughs> youngers. So maybe they will just say bowling is broken, but Flag if you it. if I you just bowling, they're gonna say jungle is broken. So. I just wanna say that I've heard that the role with the least knowledge about the game is AD carries. So I don't know if we can call <laughs> junglers delusional. I mean, there's exceptions to some AD carries. Maybe it's because you've played with Yankos for a long time. Yeah, that maybe you've, that you've made this picture. In yeah, mind. maybe, maybe I don't know. Probably. Now, of course. There has been a fluctuation in your career, right? ERLs into G2, down into ERLs, winning EU Masters as well, and then back onto the LEC. How do you deal with the pressure having to, to roll through an off-season, like not knowing what your next team will be mm -hmm. or whether you did good enough? We've seen a lot of people win EU Masters and they still don't make mm -hmm. LEC. I mean, okay, I didn't win EU Masters. <laughs> it was Aeretics, uh, it was Jack Spectre, actually. But it's fine, I, I'll take you it. You were in I'll the finals! Take it. I'll take it. Oh my God, you're right, um, you were in the finals. Semi-finals. Yeah. <laughs> I have to read yeah. my history. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, for sure at the beginning it was really tough, right? Uh, as well, I came in pretty late into the off-season. Yeah. Because uh, it was like time after Worlds. And I mean, we didn't make it really far in Worlds, but we make it like far enough. So when you come back home, you kind of need to sprint everything. And at the time I didn't have an agent. I didn't have anything. I oh. didn't have like any knowledge. And I was like really, I mean, I wasn't burned out, but I really wanted to disconnect for at least like a week. But I couldn't because I had to find like agent, I had to find team teams. And uh, like most of the teams, they either had like um, the roster like almost locked. And some of the teams I contacted as well, they were like, uh, we didn't think you were going to get kicked. Which I don't blame anyone, like it's completely respectable, right? Um, so it was like kind of rough for me. And uh, I just decided to join Heretics because uh, there's some people here that I really like in like the esports industry, like especially like from Spain. And as well, I was going back to like Spain, you know, my home, my hometown, and my <coughs> my fan base. So I mean, at the beginning it was like really hard, but then I mean, it's life, right? You you just need to move on, basically. <laughs> Talked about coming back to your family, and of course, you have a huge Spanish crowd behind you. Now, of course, that adds a lot of love, uh, but does it also add pressure, knowing that you have so many people behind you cheering for you, and in some way, you've got to make them proud? I mean, for sure, um, you know, I always want to, like, everyone that supports me, I want them to feel like, like I'm paying them back in a way of, like, performing and uh, and as well, you know, like, interacting with them. It's not only about, you know, just playing, because I really love, like, you know, talking talking to every fan base. But, of course, like, if I'm talking to my Spanish fan base, then it's way easier for me. Um, I'm not sure if it, like, adds pressure. I think it adds pressure when you go international, because I remember when, I, when you know, the rumors about me joining G2 and stuff. Yeah. It was, like, yep. like full of, like, Spanish... Uh, like people like there's so many people like defending me and like some other people like uh from like international you know not that attacking exactly but like putting there were lots of questions right yeah, you were playing yeah. you were playing in the spanish league yeah, I and mean it's I like played in spain, the team I wasn't doing yeah, that great either i, I played in spain <laughs> i didn't win anything so it was like, <laughs> like so where's sus. the guy coming from <laughs> yeah. is it just because he's spanish yeah, yeah, you it know? was so sus uh which you know like makes a lot of sense uh but yeah when the rumors came in there was like some battles which i don't really like so I prefer to, you know, to keep it chill and keep it, you know. Um, it's okay, man. Interactions give also numbers, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I mean, I don't mind it, right? But for sure, it de it depends as well on what kind of person you are. But it for sure cannot like pressure, you know, because there's like expect expectations, like not only 
not only you set yourself the expectations, but like fans' expectations. And as well, I was joining G2. I wasn't joining like any other team. So there was like already expectations on the team. Yeah. And I was replacing regulars. So there was like <laughs> more expectations. Even more. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, it was like pretty, pretty wild. Did you handled it? Honestly, now that I'm thinking about every single thing that we've added on top of that, when you joined them back I then, mean, I'm yeah, like, yeah. you're a freaking boss yeah. for like, handling like, with all before that. Before starting like screaming and like going to Berlin, I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. I mean, some days were like, I was really doubting myself. Because th- this was like so m- so much pressure. Like I didn't win anything. I'm going to G2, and uh, you know, like without like taking in consideration what anyone else says, like already, like there's like so much pressure. Yeah, good old imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah. we all have yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the good friend. Do you have like any memorable moments where it was like super intense when it has to do with gaming, where you were like, not necessarily nervous, but like tense about a situation? Um. I mean, for sure, the first week that I had COVID and stuff, I was, like, pretty tense. But I couldn't feel it much because I was, like, sick, right? So I wasn't feeling that much much pressure. I just wanted to just play, like, like human, like, as humanly possible <laughs> and uh, try not to win too much and, uh, you know, just focus on recovering. But, I mean, there's, like, some some memories for sure. Like, I remember one game with, like, the Senna triple kill or, like, something where we're <laughs> defending the next and stuff. And uh, I mean, probably there's like so m- so many more games. There were probably some incredible Aphelios plays as well. Yeah, since, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're kind of cracked on yeah, the champion. Yeah, yeah. I'm Loki Wondrick. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, from my side, like casting and hosting is so much different because it's like I'm stepping up on on the desk and I want to make your story proud, your background, where you come from, the plays that you've made, the mistakes that you've made, and not necessarily like point them out in the bad light, like you're a bad player, but it's more like, hey not everyone is perfect and here's what needs to be improved and sort of continue that story. Mm -hmm. So I feel like one of my most intense moments ever was my first EU Masters Finals cast. It was when K-Corp first came out back Mm -hmm. in 2021. And then we're playing against one of my teams from the NLC, BTXL. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and this was the the most insane finals, like the numbers that we pulled back then with KC first coming out and there was so much pressure on like delivering the correct storylines yeah, yeah. behind Cake or Pride because we didn't have a lot of info. There were like a div two org that came out of nowhere and suddenly a huge community came with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then on the other hand side, you've got poor little NLC yeah, that yeah. just made finals, <laughs> yeah. you know, and a guy called Markoon was playing in this oh, actually, org yeah, yeah, for the times. very first time. A guy called Advian, you know, was in this roster and suddenly you're trying to build all these storylines. And then they tell me on top, hey, it's going to be a duo cast. So I'm the only color caster in this best of five mm-hmm. and you're casting with Medic. And oh yeah, yeah it, sure. it's like, I'm like, I was horrified. I, I just stepped on the desk and I was like, I need to take like three yeah, very deep I mean, breaths. Like I like if you are a pro player, right? Like there's like so many things you need to take into consideration. Um, but I'm I'm guessing that's like the same for you, I guess. Oh yeah. Like um, because <laughs> I've seen like uh, I think it was shocks on Twitter like posting like the rehearsals and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I mean as well because when we watch the games, we don't usually like hear the casting right yeah. we just watch it to you like just watch the game yeah Yeah, we watch the game we we learn from the enemy we learn from our mistakes but we're not focusing on the casting because i mean because we just take it on onto another level right? yeah we want to improve we want to play better but um i mean i, I i'm guessing it's like probably your your guys are on like the same pressure spot i mean as well it depends on the person and how much you like but like push yourself, right? Yeah. And how much you you know you set the expectation on, y- on yourself. But um, I mean now that I'm thinking, this is it's basically the same. Like you you you're like legit on the on this on like the mega spotlight because like I've seen sometimes when the casters like uh you know like make mistakes or like yeah, they we mess up you know yeah, like when it's you mess so up difficult to follow live y- action because yeah. if you're sitting there and you're reviewing you're like you're pausing you're slowing it down you're speeding it up but like. If you're casting, it's like live action. You need yeah. to have a look at 10 champions at yeah, the same yeah, yeah. time. Like, did you miss your wave? I couldn't see because I was looking at top <laughs> yeah. lane, you see? So I'm like, how is Flacken in the middle of the lane? What happened yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I sometimes see, you know, when a player ins, like there's like the chat, right? Like the Twitch chat, <laughs> which so, sometimes is really good. Sometimes it's terrible. But you, <laughs> you know, you, yeah, you can see that like the junk Omega Lul O's and, and stuff. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, it's same for casters, I think, because like when someone says something like either like mega messes up or like 
Like you can just say instead of Jankos, you say Jankos, and the whole set is like Jankos, Kekdow, Jankos, Megalul. So I, I'm guessing it's like the same pressure, actually. Yeah. Well, it's, it's good that we don't have the Twitch chat on <laughs> yeah, while we're yeah, casting because yeah. that would have been doomed. Yeah. Talking about Twitch chat, you mentioned streaming as well. Yeah. Did, did you ever have like any complicated situations on stream or like cringe? I don't know. I mean, I had like so, like some leaks. Um, like I remember I was playing like a solo queue challenge and stuff and I mega leaked my account. <laughs> the, ne the next day, I leaked. Uh, Yanko's volume two. Yeah, yeah. Legit. <laughs> I I leaked as well. Um, it was oh yeah, I was doing like trials and stuff, and I, I was doing this challenge, right? So this challenge, I was just like, spamming like crazy, but as well, it was like this season was like coming, and we were preparing, so we were yeah. doing trials. And I remember like I insta finished trials, insta leave Discord Discord call, open stream, and you can see like. Like I open stream, I go to the bathroom, and there's like five minutes, and e everyone can see like no! being, like both rosters, and they can see every champ, they can see everything. But um, I mean now I'm more aware of it. Like when they actually, cause like I leaked my account, right? You went to the bathroom, you like yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm just gonna stream, I'm gonna open stream, go to the bathroom like real quick, like 20, 20, 20 seconds, thirty seconds, and then come back. But um, I mean when when I leaked my account, I actually grieved, cause like um. It was it was the solo queue challenge, right? And there was like um there was like uh like you could get like I don't know, it was like I don't know, like ten K, twelve K price if you get top one. Oh. And yeah, and I was like top one since like the f very first very first day because I was like grinding like I don't know, sixteen hours a day, eighteen hours a okay. day. Okay. Yeah, I was like crazy grinding. Uh and I was top one, right? And I leaked my account and thank God someone changed like the the the, the email and stuff and like the password. And they sent it to you? Yeah, they sent it to me. But like, imagine if they just, what? Like, yeah. Did you give them RP? I mean, I, g I gave him like, he was like a guy from like Mexico or something. I gave him like 50 euros or something. He, like, my God. Yeah, he saved my life. He <laughs> saved yeah. you so hard. Like, because I, I was checking like the OPG constantly while I, while I was like, I, you know, I was like so desperate. I was like, guys, if anyone on the chat just took my account, just please send it to me. If you have my account, <laughs> yeah, please give yeah, it to like, me. Yeah, send it to me. And I was like, perma refreshing OPG, like hoping to see if someone did anything. And I just saw he changed like the 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 icon or like the avatar. Yeah. And I was like, please, like, please just don't run it down. Like, just don't <laughs> say anything that I'm gonna get perma. Like please. And then I I checked DMs and there was a guy saying, "You I have your account?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, you have my account." And I, I tried and I was like, oh my god, I just, he just actually has the account. <laughs> 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 I was like, I was like, yeah, th this for sure, this funny guy is gonna mega troll me. And I was, yeah, if you account, I'm gonna try it, and it's, it's not gonna work. And I remember like the password was like something like mega troll. <laughs> I was like, yeah, for sure, it's not this. <laughs> the password. dude tapped something really fast yeah. to take it away, you know. And I was like, there's no way. And I tried. I was like, oh my god. This guy is saved my entire life. Well, guy from Mexico, if you're watching yeah. this, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you know. um, Oh my god, I had a thing about leaking as well. There was like a huge breach of passwords in like a really big website. Mm. Could have been Facebook. It was like a couple of years ago. And I was streaming and there's this guy that comes to my stream and he's like, hey, your password has been leaked in a huge database. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, sure. I just continue playing my Katarina, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "Hey, do you da 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 da?" And he says my password on my Twitch chat, and I'm like, <laughs> "Oh my god." <laughs> yeah. I think I went cold. By the way, I'm yeah, like, I mean no those way. moments. He oh wasn't God. joking. He was actually like there to warn me, yeah, but yeah. I thought he was like there to scam me, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I was like, no know. way! You just spilled my password, my Twitch. Thank. Thank God I was a 20 viewer Andy back then yeah, yeah. and there weren't many people watching. But I was like, holy crap, where did you get my password? And he was right. I think like a couple of months later, it actually came out that there was actually a breach on that car on that database oh, and thanks. that you should be changing passwords. And I'm like, you're telling all this two months later? Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, okay. Gamers are usually a bit silly with passwords. It's like you oh, use yeah, one yeah. password for everything. Yeah. So it's like you have to go and change everything else that you've got. Now, like it, we talked a little bit about you know the gaming pressures, mm. but what about personal life? How do you how do you work around that? Because of course you have to balance a very busy uh, professional life, mm -hmm. sorry, busy professional life and a personal life. So what's the pressure of balancing these two? I mean, at the beginning it was really hard because as well I was starting with my with my girlfriend. And I was starting my like my career, and with my girlfriend we we don't live uh, together, right? Like she lives in Madrid and I live in Barcelona, 
So at the beginning, it was like... Great opportunity to see her. Yeah. We're in Madrid. I mean, she's not here now, but... Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Juked. <laughs> yeah. But um, at the beginning, it was really hard to balance. Because um, like, I, I was like legit in the beginning of a relationship. And uh, like I was like completely rookie. And I went already to like Mad Lions and stuff. And uh, it kind of happened like in G2. Uh, I went to Mad Lions and at that time... I mean, actually, no. Because when I joined G2, they actually came from like doing like poor year. Uh, they didn't even go worlds, I think. No. Yeah, they didn't go worlds. Oh yeah, it was I think it was the first. I think it was the first year that G2 actually missed worlds. I think so. Yeah. That one, yeah. So I, like I came to like a Madlands Academy, and they came from like winning everything, and I was mega rookie. So I was like, oh shit, you know, I I, I need to step up. Got to step up. And I mean, at the beginning, it was like really hard to balance, and uh, I mean, thank God my girlfriend was like understanding, because. I was like completely griefing everything at the beginning. I was so bad at everything. Like but now? I, I mean, now, now for sure. You now, figured it out? Yeah. I mean, I have like more control of my emotions. At the beginning, I was like mega emotional. So if I would do so much, I would like insta go bed or like maybe like play solo queue until like 6 a.m. <laughs> or something. Oh, no. So yeah, yeah. It was the classic. It's the classic rookie. It's the rage rookie grind. Rookie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at the beginning, it was really hard to balance, but uh, I mean, now it's experience. This is with time, it just comes everything. I feel like especially if you have a partner and you are in the gaming scene, they need to be sort of aware of the planning that goes behind, like how yeah. many hours you need to practice. Like I've seen, I've seen some LEC like schedules and it's fully packed. Like you wake up, yeah. you go for breakfast. Some people go to the gym as well, like super early in the morning and then it's practice, 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 practice. Hey, I need to get my solo queue gaming in as yeah. well because I don't, I can't drop solo queue. So it's kind of like 10 p.m. at night and you're still basically at the office. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, I've got my personal experiences with that <laughs> as well. I can tell that, like, uh, well, I mean, it's beautiful, but sometimes it's like really rough. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, are, like, for example, right now I'm gone from my partner for like a week because obviously, like, I'm traveling to do the you know, Masters Finals and like LEC, and of course, be here with you. So it's, it takes like a special person to understand. Yeah, I mean, for sure, what you're doing. Yeah, I right? mean, both both sides they need to be like mega understanding. Yeah. That's the key. I'm glad you have found it as well and you figured it out and you, <laughs> you evolved through it. Yeah, you know, we yeah, all do. Sure. We all do. Now, Mr. Flakid, mm -hmm. from one to ten, what was your stress level this last split to make playoffs with Heretics? Okay. Um, one to ten. Because you guys needed, I think, like a top three I mean, we to make season yeah, finals we or need something. To do it was crazy. Yeah. You need to do an Excel. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah, we need to pull an Excel <laughs> for sure. Um, I mean, I would say it was like five or six. It wasn't that high. Okay. I and mean, for sure there was pressure, right? When you're competing, there's like pressure. And if you don't feel pressure, maybe you shouldn't compete, I guess. But um, I mean, un unless you're, I don't know, maybe you're a monk or something. <laughs> you never feel pressure. But um, I wouldn't say there was much. Because we, we came in, I came with BT as well. And it was like a fresh new environment for the team. Mm -hmm. So it was like, because they told me at the beginning, uh, you know, like the mood is not the best. Because uh, it makes sense, right? Because they did uh, in winter and spring. Like It wasn't that great. Yeah, it didn't bang. So I came in, you know, with like expectations like, oh shit, maybe, you know, <laughs> maybe I'm going to come here and I'm not going to have a great time. But uh, I came there, um, you know, I was re re reunited with Jankos and we started, you know. Winning? Yeah, we started you can winning. Say it. <laughs> we started winning and, and let's say sharing the, the, the same brain cell. And uh, you know, he he started to be, you know, like enjoying more the game and enjoying more like the time uh, itself. So uh I was I me and Bitio gave like a really positive uh environment to the team. So I really enjoyed my you know, like the the, the last summer split we, we played. And um as well like sp I'm not sure about, about the pressure for like Abby, Jankos, and Mercer, which were the guys that started from winter. But for me and BT, it was kind of like for you it was a fresh start, right? I mean, it yeah. Was a, yeah, like fresh start, and as well like like s something like, like mercenaries or something, you know? Like you come here uh, with like no expectation at, at all, because like in winter and spring, like uh, the team didn't get like many points. We we, got, we had like thirty points something, and we needed like I don't know how many we needed. We needed I think like a hundred and something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it was like, okay, guys, you come here, fresh environment, just flip it. <laughs> and if it doesn't go well, then sucks. But uh, 
for sure it was a great opportunity for me and Bitya to you know you know showcase that um, you know we we deserve to be in LEC because Bitya came from the the uh, splits in Excel. He, he needed a first start yeah. too. Yeah. Especially for me, like this particular year was a little bit more, s not stressful, but more challenging because I, I dived into roles that I have never done before. Yeah. Like, for example, interviewing. That was my first ever time interviewing in the LEC. And interviewing my, might seem easy because it's like, hey, I'm coming to you. How are you doing today? But it feels like sometimes there's like a lot of people who don't necessarily know how to unlock their emotions and they really want to yeah. speak about yeah, yeah. how they felt about this game. And you just... You just need to be able to un understand them and yeah. let them speak their mind. I think there's like a whole different beast behind that. Hosting, I'm not even going to go there. I hosted for the first time in my life this year as well. And you have like producer in your ear. You've got a prompter in front of you. You've got graphics queued up. You've got a wall behind you. You've got your two yeah, analysts. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, stuff. I don't know how shocks and lore keep doing this all these years, but I was like, oh my God, there's so many things to yeah. tackle. So I feel like... There is a pressure when you when you jump, you know, from like all four different roles, mm -hmm. like around like analyst, caster, uh, host, interviewer. But there's also a fun in learning how to tackle different attributes of each mm -hmm. role, I guess, and and what what you can do with them. It, I think we did talk about the moment that you have been the most under pressure as a pro. Mm. Was it that first week in G two? I mean, the first week in G2 was really pressure, but I think I would say in Worlds. Worlds? Yeah. It was like my first time in Worlds, and um, there was some stuff going on, uh, like outside the game, uh, which didn't bang and didn't help anyone to, you know, play, be play better. Um, but um, yeah, I think that time was like, okay, there was one time actually I remember in MSI when we went like 20 something wins in a row or something. And then we. You were coming from a banger split. Yeah. We we beat T1 RNG on the same day, and I was like, "What? We're too good." Yeah, are we just the best in the world now? <laughs> Can then, you get worlds over yeah, already? And then the next day, we get completely stomped by like uh, by like uh, it was like PSG and I don't know what, what Buffaloes I think it was Saigon Buffalo and stuff. It was the underdogs for sure. Yeah, and I was like, th I think we went from like 24 wins to like 20 something wins to like seven win streak, like like lose streak. Sorry, and. Um, it came to a point where we started like 2-0 or 3-0 and uh, it came to a point where we needed like an A to win or something. And Imagine when, needing yeah, an A to yeah, win. When you need an A to win, then you know <laughs> you, you're, you, yeah, you know you're, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know you're a bit fucked. If you, need, if you need an A to win, I mean, maybe, you know, there's a chance, right? But... Um, like well, they've done it before. They did reach MSI yeah. finals back when G2 won it. So yeah, but if you need to cheer for an A, then <laughs> it's like la last resource, I would say. <laughs> All right, and what do you do before something like this? Like when it's like a series that's extremely stressful or a game, like your second day that you said, hey, we went into the first day, we stomped the two most popular teams and then we started losing. When you start losing, what do you do to sort of like de-stress yourself? I mean, first of all, um, I mean, the day that you lose, you try to, I mean, try not to think about, about it, you know? Like, I mean, you can think of it, uh, like o on the game itself, mm -hmm. but usually the first thoughts is like, oh, I'm inting, or oh, we yep. we're bad, or we inted, or or we need to fix stuff and stuff. Um, so, I mean, personally, I don't recommend the first day to you know dig much into it. I think it's better to just focus on getting like good sleep, and uh, if you can spend time with your your teammates if they want, yeah, because some people they don't they don't feel like you know talking and stuff. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, the first day when you lose, you probably is better that you're focusing on you focusing on resting and you know making sure that you can sleep well, and then the next day you can start talking about stuff. But um, when there's like losing streaks, it's it's really hard. It depends. Like it really shows when a team is a proper team, you know, with like good foundation and stuff. Because uh, when you're losing, when you're losing a lot, uh, there's like two sides. It can be either like Everyone gets like so unconfident, yeah. or egos start to you know pop up, which is also not great, right? Yeah. Because then a lot of opinions yeah. start surfacing, which are not necessarily. I mean, sometimes right it can ones, work, right? right? Yeah. I, if you have like a lot of ego and you start calling and stuff, and you're like one be ending, sure it can work. You take it on your back, okay? Yeah. Sure. But I mean, of course, not the best, right? It's better to just rely on your teammates and on yourself and just be good as a team. But um, 
I'm for sure but when when this like streaks come of like four four or five losing streak or, or like two or three weeks of only losing, you really start doubting on yourself and on your teammate and um it just shows when you guys uh, are like a good team or you get along well with each other and stuff. When you when you still talk about the game or when you still interact with your teammates and you just don't close yourself in the room and just go to swims because it's your work and then after that do whatever whatever without the, like your team and stuff. Um, it really shows when you are a good teammate and a good player, I think. And uh, not not everyone is easy to manage, I would say. Oh, for sure. Everyone has their own yeah. personality, right? Um, so it's always difficult to dig into yeah. everyone. Like so figure sometimes what they want. it can happen that uh, I mean, of course, if you're losing, you always have like part of the blame, right? Yeah. But sometimes there's stuff that you just can't control. Yeah, absolutely. Now, and especially sorry for interrupting. Of course. Um, if you're rookie and stuff, because I remember in the early days, I could see some stuff like not going well, but it depends as well on your teammates, right? But um, it's sometimes it's hard to step up when uh, when you're starting because uh, I remember when I started I had like a Werlip and Hadrix and and all these players which I had like a lot of respect for them and uh, something similar they told me with like uh, uh, I'm not sure if it was like Jack in when he came to LC he like I don't know if it was like Jankos inting or someone inting or there was like an issue and stuff but he had like so much respect for the players and me included as well when I came to G2 and I could see like Caps going zero fifteen on Ari or like LeBlanc, mega running it down. What do you say? Yeah, you know? I'm not gonna go there and say, it, bro, it's it you run it down. It's got the bullshit. You're just win training, just just griefing. Right. Okay, so basically, I was never superstitious in my life, never ever. You know, like m maybe my grandma, you know, if if there's a stair, she would like not go like uh, you know like underneath. She would go like to the there's side. There's a black cat or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like if she breaks a mirror or something, and I was like. This is this is like bullshit, right? Like who who who, who can actually believe in this? And then you could ask my grandma. Yeah, I mean, believe yeah, all this. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know, maybe maybe she knows something. I don't know. But um, then I remember in, in Mad Lions Academy, I I remember one day I woke up before match day and I didn't know what to do and I didn't want to like play match solo because we played at like nine and t or ten. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna you know like uh like waste my like all my energy. I'm gonna wait a bit. And I was like, okay. I'm gonna go for a walk. I went for a walk, and then I was like, "Okay, I'm just gonna go like watch a movie." Okay. And then I watched. Uh, on your match day, you went for a movie. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I was like, uh, you know, well, uh, like on the PC. I was. I just went on Netflix and just watch a movie. And oh, okay, that way. I thought you went to the cinema. No, no, I didn't go to the cinema. Oh, I, I, no, I mean, <laughs> I, went to the cinema. <laughs> I, I just went on the PC and just watch a movie. And I watched uh, Scarface. Okay. It was a movie, and it's like three hours long. And that day, I played like mega good, and. Um, and overall, I just felt like really good, really confident, like really chilling in game. So the ne then like the next match, I'm like, sure, I'm just going to try it again. Go watch a movie again. Yeah, no, and I watched the same movie. Oh. Yeah, I watched the same movie and we won again. And I did that for like, I don't know, like six or seven win streak. I was playing so good. You watched the same movie six times in a row? <laughs> yeah, I was, no, but like until this day, every time this match, I'm still watching the movie. The same movie. You watch Scarface every watching, single yeah. time. And I'm like... Like, I just hear the intro, I'm like, no, like, not again. I don't want to do this. But, because, okay, at the beginning I was like, sure, it's like a ritual. I'm like mega superstitious right now. And one day I was like, okay, I'm not going to watch it. And then I mega choked. I played, like, so bad. And then I was like, wait, this is this. It was the movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, there's no way. Because I, I went to my teammates and I was like, okay, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. But <laughs> I didn't watch the movie today. <laughs> I, was like, I don't want to say it. And then from then on out, they yeah. will be forcing you to yeah. watch the movie. Uh, after that, I was like, I'm, I'm never watching it every time. And I, I've been in like, um, like last played in Heretics and in G2. Sometimes I was like, uh, uh, managers asking, did you watch the movie? Uh, yeah, yeah, I watched it. <laughs> Just to make sure. Yeah. Uh, like they, I, I think even in Heretics they were like, uh, I think Rob, like the, um, oh my god, I forgot the word. He's like, um, like performance coach. Yeah. Um, yeah, at some point he was like, maybe we could find you know like an edit of Scarface or something, like in case you don't have time to watch. So you don't have movie. to watch the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. In case you don't have to watch, in, in case you don't have time to watch a full movie, maybe just watch an edit or something. 
But uh, I mean, and when that happened, when I mega choked and I mega played bad, I was like, okay, I'm not skipping the movie ever, 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 ever again. <laughs> not even. Just watch the trailer, not the trailer. The no, three-hour yeah, hour yeah, full movie. movie. And oh my god, it's just, it's just like at some point I was like, okay, I think I reached like the peak of like disgusting. <laughs> you know, I could hear the intro. I was like, I, I'm, I'm already like disgusted. At this point, you know the script. You yeah. know what every okay, actor yeah, there's, says. There's like some scenes that I can. Okay, my acting is terrible and my accent is is terrible, but I can probably like read the script for like two minutes, <laughs> like like some like <laughs> mega like uh, you know like um like famous scenes you know, of Scar- of Scarface. I can probably like if you is give me like one minute to watch before I can just probably like say the entire. That's script. a great content idea for her. I think you should pitch that to them. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they want to. <laughs> 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 they say this. But um, at some point I was like, okay. There's no way it can get like more disgusting than this. But every time I watch it, I'm like more disgusted. But I can't stop watching. Because if I don't watch it, I... You I can't ha- play the game, Yeah, apparently. I just can't play. I actually can't play. I can play like 20 solo queues and maybe one nine. But if I go on stage and I didn't watch my movie, I'm just I'm just going to choke it. I'm just, <laughs> just going to choke it. Are you standing with Heretics for the next LEC split? Yeah. Okay. Um, They told like me. That. They confirmed it. That they confirmed it to me. If I'm not... It sucks. <laughs> I should be. But okay. the, que- the yeah, answer okay, is I, I should be. <laughs> I should be. But you know, it's like it's life, right? You never know what's gonna happen. Anything. That is true. There so have been there yeah. have been many domino effects yeah. in Europe lately. Yeah, so this let's not take anything as my dad would say, don't take anything for granted. Just enjoy the moment. Fair enough. Santander people were at Montpellier mm-hmm. and they went around the expo. And they found some fans of yours. Okay. And these fans had things to say about you or ask you. Okay, sure. Shall we check it out? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's check it out. Oh, okay. Let your bias come free. Okay, okay. I mean, first of all, Heretics is the best club I've ever been in my life. I love Heretics. It's the best club. Um, um, yeah, I mean, okay, it kind of puts me in this spot now. Okay, just say a player that you would be that I you mean, would be excited sure, to play with. No? I mean, I really like um, all the, um, like I have really good relationship with all these Spanish players. Okay, you I know what? I'm gonna make it even more difficult. No Spanish player. No Sp- okay, then Bibi. <laughs> it's not difficult. It's actually more difficult than even Spanish players. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna put the Spanish players back okay, in the pool. Um, Spanish players that I would, I mean, probably I would say like Razok, probably. Razok? Yeah, Razok. Why? I think I just have like the, the best relationship with him. Let's jump to the next oh, yeah. video. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the most uh, who the hardest ADC to play against? Ooh. Um, That's a tough one, man. You've been to Worlds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from Worlds, though, I didn't play against, like, insane botlins. Because I played against Hope, which was really good. And then it was, um, who was the dumb one, Lady Carry? It was, uh, no, Kelly, the support Kelly. Who was the dumb one? It was, man, I forgot the name. Oh, it's not here. Like, last year, in, in, in that one, it was, like, Noguri. Uh, and, and now, I don't know where it's Noguri. Noguri Showmaker. Noguri Showmaker Canyon. Canyon. Kellen, I think, on support. They keep changing the Eddie Carries, man. I can't keep oh, track. Oh, it's, uh, the... the, the the Daekum or something like that, no? Like with D. It starts with D. Dogdam? Do, I think it was Dogdam. I think. I'm not sure. But for sure they they weren't like the strongest AD carries or the strongest boldness. But I think... Um, I mean, I think... Okay, I'm not sure if it was the hardest because uh, it depends as well, right? Because if I played Guma Yusi in five years ago, I would get like mega stomp. And if I play it now, I probably still get some, but less. Not mega. Yeah. Maybe some, maybe I win. Maybe you'd be But him? now it's a flip. Back in the days, it wouldn't be a flip. But um, I remember one time, it was a, it was a Worlds in, in Europe, or MSI, I think it was Worlds. And I played against Uzi in solo queue. Oof. I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, he, he blind picked Central, and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go to Raven. And I knew he was Uzi because there was like so many people like... um tracking webs and stuff and uh he was like spamming as well like a maniac and he was in 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 queue and champ select i was like please don't let it be easy because uh, sure 
And he was in a counter matchup as well. Yeah, at that time, I was like 16 or something, or 15, and I wanted to grind, right? So if I'm playing against Uzi, I'm not going to grind. <laughs> so I was like, okay, sure, I want to play against Uzi, but as well, I want to grind. I want to, but I don't want to yeah. at the same time. So he blinds Ezreal. I'm like, okay, at that time, I was wanting Draven. I was like, okay, this matchup is like good for, for Draven. It's a winning matchup, yeah. Like the the theory, it just, it just wasn't there. <laughs> I was supposed to counter Ezreal, but I the math didn't math. Yeah, one plus one didn't I, equal I, two. I actually couldn't believe it. <laughs> I actually, I I was getting so outspaced, like to oblivion. I couldn't dodge any Q, and I wasn't even choking. I was like, I just, I this just guy's can't. A god. Yeah, and he was at the times. I think after that, I'm not sure if he retired or the next year he retired, but he was like not even he in his prime, and I was like, what? <laughs> what is this? Imagine like Vayne Uzi in his prime. I mean, as well. yeah, I mean, if if they tell me it's Uzi and it's Vayne, I probably just dodge. But when I see Ezreal, okay, maybe like this champion is, you know, they 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 say is weak in lane. Even to be honest with you, I don't know, man. I feel like Eastern Ezreals are a whole different yeah, monster, I mean, yeah, you know. Yeah. Like especially like I think Chinese think Chinese Bang, Ezreal is Bang, does make sense. Uzi Vipers, um, yeah. Ruler. Yeah, it does make sense. They they just took it on this champ. Like level one, they're constantly fighting, and in Europe, it's like, yeah, I'm scaling. You just sit there hitting cues yeah, on the way. Yeah, with cues, chilling, and when they play Ezreal in, in Asia, it's just. In your face. It's, it's stronger than Draven, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They, they have like more damage or something. All right, and if you had to choose an Eddie Carry from the LEC? I mean, I didn't play Hansama, but I imagine it would be Hansama, probably. But uh, that I played, I would say upset. Like from last year that I played and this year, I would say. Yeah, I would say probably probably upset was the. Wait, did I play Hansama? I played Hansama actually. Yeah, I played. Well, it summer. happened to be in the same one league game. this year. Yeah, I played one game against him. Oh, it was the Chrono Break and stuff. The game. Oh my god. Um, That's why you don't want to remember it. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but that game I didn't feel like particularly like I was getting like uh, you know like stomped or anything. I think I was fine. Um, but I think I'm not sure if there was. There was like one game against Upset or Karsi that was getting like so stumped. I think it was Upset. So Abs I think like from the games I played in LC, the, the the game I felt like I got like the hardest stomp, it was uh, against Upset, I think. All right. So we'll move on from that thresh. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to play with your affiliates apparently. Yeah, I mean I mean <laughs> he didn't know one. my affiliates, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Is me playing? Velvet, Velvet. I want them to play Yorick oh Mori <laughs> on top lane. Do it, <laughs> cowards! Do it! <laughs> <laughs> You've got an interesting choice. Okay, so what are the champions? Okay, Thresh, Lux, Yorick, Thresh, Thresh, Velvet, Yorick, and Lux. Okay. So, so I mean, I've seen some crazy like AD Thresh like in Aram or like some weird solo queue. Yeah, you know? but like to play like like AD carry or solo queue. What? Yeah, AD carry. I mean, I played like AD carry for sure. Yeah, Sometimes. I think that would be the easy choice, no? Yeah, but like Loki boring, no? I think Belveth it banks. Okay, Yorick, I'm not playing this champ. Yeah, I'm not playing Yorick. But Belveth, I don't know. Ever since the Zero Portal got yeah. lost, Yorick got lost with it, you know? Yeah, Yorick doesn't bang. And Thresh. Eh. Eh. It's kind yeah. of boring too, no? Yeah. Yeah. Like you're AD, but you have Hook. But like Belveth? Yeah, Belveth Banks. You just keep zigzagging yeah. all the time in I lane. I mean, Belveth support is disgusting. Belveth support? Yeah. Why? It's OP as fuck. Like, I remember the, the there was like a Brazilian guy, uh, Ayu, like from Furia. He came for like MSI bootcamp or something. And he got the rank one. And I was checking this guy. Because I was wondering if he was like AD carry or support. And I think apparently he rerolled. He was like support main and then he moved to the carry. But when I checked the OPG, I was like, I don't know what this guy plays. He's like most played. <laughs> it was like belt support and then like Ezreal. I was like, what? Yeah. And he got rank one. And I remember like his last 20 games, he was like b only belt. And he was like mega on benigning. And this is crazy. It's like level one, all in. Level two, all in. Level three, all in. What? Yeah. If it doesn't work, you go next. 15. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, <laughs> I was getting perma one shot. Uh, he had like insane weird attack. It was crazy actually. So maybe, yeah, Velvet Trolley. Okay, <laughs> just <laughs> just a little tangent from here. What is the funniest thing that Jankos has done? Funniest or weirdest? Because oh. he was complaining before you joined that the guys in Heretics were also not taking out the trash and he had to be their maid and he had to like clean everything. So I don't know. Maybe he figured something out. Okay, I remember. <laughs> okay, I remember one time. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. okay, I remember in G2. Okay, it's not something that Jankos did, but his reaction was so fucking fun. Okay, so the thing is, in G2 we had the chores. And it was like, a, I mean, we, we, we had to do like, a, we put like our names in like a, I mean, in, in like a cup. A cup, yeah. yeah. And it was like random. And uh, it was do it was uh, done by couples. So it was like two people in charge of the okay. trash and two people in charge of the like the dishes and stuff. And I remember one day, <laughs> I think it was like Targa, who didn't take the trash in like any single day of the week. And he, he was even like though his name was picked, yeah, okay. And he was like putting so many excuses. At some point, me and Baby had this smart idea of just like putting like the trash bags. On his like on the front of the door. So but <laughs> when he his opens, the, yeah, when he opens the door, it's like full of trash, <laughs> and some smell like mega shit. I remember one day it was like so much trash, like three bucks or something, on his door, and it was like next to Janko's door. I remember Jankos, he wakes up at like eight or something <laughs> to go to the gym, and he goes to the to the bathroom to wash, and he's like only with like fucking um like underwear only and flip flops, and he comes, and he's like mega triggered. <laughs> and me and we were like laughing so hard, he was so triggered. And I think in the end he like he took he took it. He's like he's the kind of guy that's like, why don't you do this? And instead of like letting you do it to like He does it himself. Yeah. It's like he flames and then he does it. It's like, what are you doing? But I remember as I was like crying so hard. Because like Targa was the guy supposed to do it and he wasn't doing it. And me and we punish him. And Jank is got affected by it. And, oh, I, I was just crying. Like his so reaction. So just in boxes and flipper and flippers, yeah. yeah. And he was so triggered. He was like, I, I actually I didn't see Jankos that triggered in my life. And he was he was like the funniest thing. Like proper angry triggered. Yeah. <laughs> he was like so triggered. He was so mega triggered. And we're like, he, was like, he's, he's he told well. me the same about heretics before you joined them. He was like, no one's doing anything. I'm doing everything. Yeah, yeah. And he was like complaining yeah. about no one doing I anything. Mean, for, for but sure then he like, was like, but I'm doing it for yeah. them. But yeah. I'll complain about it. Yeah. This is, this is crazy. Because like, if you complain, sure. I mean, you're on your on your right, right? Makes sense. Like, someone has to do it. They don't do it. You complain. Yeah, perfect. But then don't do it for them. <laughs> Just make them, you know, like, you enforce them. Just tell them, are you are you cute? No, they do trash. I'm just gonna stay here but until he, you but, do this. But he would come to your room and tell and tell you, why didn't you take the trash? It was your turn. I was like, okay, sorry, my bad. I go, no, no, I took it. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> sure, I did it anyway. <laughs> sure, it he is the dad of the team in the end. Yeah, of the I day. mean, he's for sure the dad of, of the team. But I don't know, I don't know. It's, I just don't know why he does it like every time. <laughs> Maybe we should ask him next time. Because I keep track with him in winter, but I didn't keep track with him in summer since you joined. I heard that you do your chores. Yeah. There you go. That's maybe that's why he didn't complain again ever. Okay, in Jitu I wasn't doing many. But okay, I was trying I was trying for sure. But okay. sometimes, especially with trash bags, they were so big I just couldn't carry them. <laughs> I mean they were so heavy and I was always asking Jankus for help. I okay. would always come. Because he's very strong. Yeah. I mean okay. he goes to the gym every of single course. day and he's insane biceps. Small brain, but insane biceps. You gotta build something up, you know? Yeah, of course. Sorry, I bet that Oh, okay. Okay. Take two. How many rubber ducks does she actually have? Oh. Wait, rubber duck? <laughs> I mean, rubber duck, like, like, like the little ones? Yeah, like the rubber duck is that, I don't know, if it was like any cartoons, they have them like yeah, in yeah, the yeah, bath. Yeah, like the little ones, yeah. Um, I actually have like some of them. You have rubber ducks? Yeah. How many? Uh, I don't know. Like maybe four or five. Because um, usually when I go to like, you know, like events and stuff, like some some like people, they come to me and sometimes they give me like letters and stuff. Sometimes they give me gifts. And usually it's like either shirts with ducks or like rubber ducks. Or rubber, rubber <laughs> yeah, ducky. Oh, bang. that's yeah, so yeah. cute. Yeah, it bangs. Well, to be fair, pets do help a lot with the stress. True. And you have one of the most famous pets over in the LEC yeah, as I well. Teton, tetoncito. Tetoncito? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I heard that maybe you have brought him with you here. I brought him. I you can, have? Yeah, I can bring it if you want. Yes? Okay, sure. One second. Okay. Okay. Okay, I can't bring Ted. Okay, I call him Ted. Ted, okay. Because at the beginning it was Tetoncito. Because we thought it was a male. Because Tetoncito is male name. Okay. But then she laid an egg. So it was Tetoncita. So Tetoncito is, tetoncito. is a Tetoncita. Yeah. And now it's Tet. <laughs> you, I don't think you want to see mm, Tet. 
It's like, okay, you want to see him? He's really cute. And yeah. He's really social. But he shits every two minutes. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's no, a bird. It's okay, fine. Okay, <laughs> you say it's okay, but it, I'm telling you it's not okay. Have you ever had a bunny rabbit? They do the yeah. same thing. Okay, yeah. But like they mega poop like insane amounts and smelly sometimes. Really okay, smelly. then this one will do yeah. for now. <laughs> yeah. We'll name her <laughs> the Tonsita. Yeah, that. And we'll, we'll pretend that we have met the real one. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll do a sessions at uh, the sessions close to your house, so you can bring the yeah, sit sure, up with sure, a leash. I'm not, I'm not, but the people in you know, like taking care of the place, they they might be you know, not the happiest. All right, then let's look at the next one since we have Tetonsita with us. Cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know who is this three guy, three guys. You know, you are matching the Don Sita with your t shirt right now. Yeah, so you're like halfway there, yeah. but I have a way that you can go fully there. Serious? I really don't want to know. <laughs> I really well, don't want to know. I really don't want to know. I magically happen to have this. Oh well, my God. so are you down for the challenge they gave you or not? I'm down. I don't want to do it, but I will do it. But I really don't want to do it. We're doing it for the fans? I do it for Yankos. Okay, that's for you. <laughs> okay, actually... How how does it feel? I was expecting way worse. Yep. But it's so comfy and chill. I'm not sure how I'm looking. I don't really want to see how I'm looking. So I'm just vibing right now. That's great. That's, you know what? You look great. Serious? You think that Tonsita would like would like that? Uh, I hope not. Well, she's not actually yellow, right? She's white, so. Yeah. Maybe I mean, she when, you, when she was a baby, she was yellow. Ah. Yeah, but now it's white. So baby, oh, you're a baby duck right now. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I, I really hope not. <laughs> You'll get there, man. <laughs> okay, so let's watch the rest of the video scene. Yeah, sure. Maybe, maybe yeah. they have a cosplay for you, maybe. I hope not. Hopefully. <laughs> I've been chased for that for a long time. Oh, oh, great. You know, I how think this is way cringe than what I just did, I think. Why did they give me the two people who are the most the most cringe when they do content on the LEC? Yeah, it's like Vedius has like what Welshiest, he has <laughs> Flexiest, yeah, he has a uh, what else? He I don't know. Stuff He's Nocturne well. kind of bangs though. He's what? Nocturne. Yeah, but I can't. I can't. Yeah, I mean you can't. I mean yeah. I can't do that one. Yeah. But you know what? Um, Ender had some content where he was in like grudge matches. Fuck it. Versus Yankos, grudge match. That's all I can do. Oh, I'm gonna yeah, lose my it, voice. You, yeah, I, I was gonna ask you to stop. So it bangs. Thank you. So okay, you well, it wasn't that bad. If you ask someone to stop something, that means it bangs. No, I mean. <laughs> you were just freaking sometimes. Hyped. Sometimes <laughs> it depends on the context. Okay. It depends on the context. Okay. But it wasn't. I mean, like the impression was good. Yeah, it, it was fine. Well, yeah. Good. good, I, mean, good. I, I prefer the costume than doing. <laughs> the <impression. laughs> good. Good for me. Maybe we should get me a costume. Uh, I mean a costume ne next time. Chill. So, Plucket, are you having any fun? Yeah. Because we are. We're nearing the end. Oh. And you know how Sex. they say that you learn something new every single day. Yeah. The biggest light. You learn no, something new every cap, day. Actually, cap. You always learn. Big cap. You're Mega cap. You, you always learn something. Yeah, maybe the th tiniest, you, know? you learn like two or three things or five things. Maybe. So have you learned anything from today? Yeah, actually, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm done. Maybe, maybe I actually like, um, you know, um, cosplaying. It bangs. It's maybe so you're chill. a good cosplayer. No, okay, I'm for sure not a good cosplayer. But maybe I like it. It's so chill, so comfy. I mean, a bit cringe. This is the price to pay, you know? Maybe you can get a few onesies at home. Now that you feel yeah. that they're comfy. Maybe I can just go like this as a duck for like a week. Ooh. Okay, but not as a challenge. Just LEC challenge. week, you're wearing no. this and on top of it, the jersey. Okay, LEC doesn't let me wear this. Yeah, b because, oh, I mean, maybe with the jersey. You can put the jersey on okay, top. Okay, no, because one day we wanted to play with wigs in G2 and they didn't let us. Oh. I had wigs, I had matching wigs with Bibi and I couldn't. Oh, know. it was the big ones, no? Yeah. 
Oh, that was banger. We were on stage, and when Champions uh, selected Salad, they, they, they s- told us to remove it. Oh, man, that yeah. sucks. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Was it, maybe it was for sound issues, though. I mean, maybe. Because, like, the wig would probably, like, mess with the sound, maybe. I mean, yeah, probably this. Probably. I mean, but this? It's like, yeah, I mean, it's it's like wearing a onesie. You could be wearing a onesie to the studio. Yeah. All right. I may, uh, maybe I'll go with this one day to the LSC studio. Cool. That's a good. Yeah. That's uh, that's some good advice yeah. for if yourself. I don't, if I don't have anything to lose, I will just go with this. Absolutely. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Good advice for yourself. Yep. Do you have any advice for our viewers or your fans? Um. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um. I mean, first of all, cosplaying Gigabanks from what I, I just tested. Really nice. And second of all, um, I invite everyone uh, hearing this and watching this oh. to please, Riot, don't listen to this. Stop playing TFT. This game doesn't bang. I prefer if you guys play ARM or solo queue. Okay, Yankos. Solo queue is for like real chats, it's like going to war. It's mental warfare constantly, every game, with your team. You're playing one binary. You come out the strongest person. <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm not the strongest soldier. I sometimes cry. You've lost you've lost the battle sometimes. Yeah. I yeah. I mean I had voices from last year. <laughs> in solo queue. But I do have fun while playing, so I don't mind. And yeah, that's my you know my Awesome. My tips. Cosplay, play TFT, no, and solo queue sometimes. No, no, I didn't say this. Cosplay, Adam, if you want. I don't respect it, but I am and <laughs> solo you. I respect it, solo you. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I want to thank also Santa Der for having us at their work cafe. It has been great. They created a yep. very, very nice uh, session stage for us to have our chats. I hope you enjoyed your chat. Uh, your chat with me, Flacket. You I were did. the first sessionist. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I was a bit pressured at the beginning, but okay. then. I had no expected uh, expectations of myself. Expectations, sorry. So then, I mean, I just went with the flow, mega chill. For some reason, I ended up with a dark costume on my head and a dark plushie. Oh. And Ted, I b- brought Ted as well. Ted and Sita. Maybe this could be Ted and Sita's favorite toy from now on. Maybe. Or maybe it's the favorite costume of my duck. I, <laughs> I hope not. That's awesome. I don't want to true. wear this uh, probably anymore, but. It banks, actually. Actually, it banks. Like, I'm just being dramatic, I think. It just banks. Okay, perfect. Flacken, thank you so much for joining me. Thank I you so hope much. you had as much fun as I did chatting to you. Uh, we're going to be back. We're going to bring many, many more gaming celebrities on the stage of the sessions. So if you did enjoy this episode, make sure to stay tuned because there's many more coming. I'm not going to tell you with who, but do stay tuned. Hope the cosplay. Hope the cosplay. See you on the next one.